Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 638, and we are live in Southwest Florida in my studio this morning. It's super stormy outside, and uh, lightning and thunder and all that stuff and dark, so thought it seemed a little bit safer to come in here instead. And I have something, something came up this weekend that I thought you would enjoy watching a tutorial on. So I'll wait a few seconds for people to pop over and say hello. Hi, Joe. Hi, Naomi. Yes, happy new week, everybody. Hi, Kiranjeet. Hi, Thea, Lisa. Hi, jo uh, Judy, Melanie, Judy, Thea, Sean. Lily, Jill, Rita, Carrie Mate, Lisa, Judy. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Judy. Lots of updates for you today. Hi, Diane. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Marsha. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Patricia, Judy. Happy Monday, everybody. Hi, Harvicia. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Maybe got some crafting done. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Kim. I did a massive knitting day yesterday. I spent 14 hours solid trying to finish <laughs> that knit dress I started last week. Um, I literally started the second piece yesterday and didn't stop until I finished. It took 14 hours and I knit the back of it. Now, that's faster than a dress normally would be because of those drop stitches. One of the other beauties of drop stitches that I did not mention last week when we were comparing all the different kinds is that drop stitches actually speed up your work. You get more fabric, you get more bang for your buck. You get a larger fabric with less time because those stitches are so quick to make and they give you such height. So um, they are, they do speed up the work quite a bit, but 14 hours for half a dress is still a significant amount of time. I mean, the actual knitting time on just making the pieces now is 28 hours, not including assembly and all the other things, but still it's a dress and it's gorgeous. So uh, I finished both pieces last night. Last night I made sure to weave in the loose ends on both pieces. I soaked them in delicate wash and water overnight so that I could dry them a little bit in a towel or, you know, get out the excess moisture. And I thought you might enjoy watching me block them with blocking wires and pins this morning. So I thought that that was a good reason to come to my desk because my desk is a pretty decent sized surface and I can put up, oh, Jill, you hope I got paid holiday overtime. No, my boss is mean. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't have any plans. I didn't have, uh, I didn't really see anybody. I saw Marlon a little bit. He. Uh, comes and goes, you know, and uh, so I spent the holiday weekend by myself, so I may as well work. I uh, hope everybody else had fun, though. All I, I mean, I barbecued, but it was just for meal prepping. It wasn't for a party or anything. I'm still social distancing to the max. But, you know, somebody that already works alone and lives mostly alone, um, it's pretty normal for me to social distance anyway, so there's it's it's kind of com it's kind of my comfort zone, so I don't feel like I'm missing out that much. Hi Barbara, Naomi stayed home. Hi Mariana. Hi G. It would be fun to uh, hang out with people again, but I'm in no rush. <laughs> I've got plenty of work to do, and I love what I do, so that's fine. Uh yeah, I suppose, Jill. I spend most of my time alone anyway, though. It's just what I do, so. I truly work all the time, as some of you may already know or may not, but I really just, I, I work all the time. But I enjoy it. So I'm going to move my computer now a little bit. Oh, I have lots of updates before we even do the tutorial, though. Hold on. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to give you updates on. 
I can't remember how much we talked about Spanx last week, but I do, um, ah, Jill, I'm alone by choice. Don't worry about that. Don't feel sorry for me. I have my kitties and I have my work and uh, I'm very content being alone most of the time. Don't feel sorry for me, it's okay. Should Prince Charming come along, I'll find room for him in my life, but until then I'm, I'm pretty content with my kitties and my work, trust me, and my garden and my bike rides. I mean, I'm content, don't feel sorry for me. Uh, okay, so a few uh, exciting updates for you. The mystery crochet along and the mystery knit along shawl patterns Part one of each one was sent out this morning. So if you've already downloaded either or both of those patterns, you've got your first set of instructions. Yes, Naomi, I enjoy the peace and freedom of being single. You're absolutely right. That is the positive side of being single. I'm very content where, right where I'm at, trust me. Um, <laughs> being with someone that you're not happy with is way more of a prison than being alone and having your freedom and your peace. Anyway, so let's go back to the shawl though. Uh, both shawl patterns, the part one of three was released this morning. Each one has been broken up into three different sets of sections. They are all they are both top-down shawls. So the first section will also be the smallest section. Medium, the rows will be longer. And then the third section, the rows will be the longest of all. But each one, is, there's a reason for each one to be separated into three sections, and you'll understand that when you get all of it. It's different types of instructions in each one. So the first set of instructions was released this morning for both. So the chart and written instructions for part one went out. And at the end, I even show you a progress photo of what mine looked like at that point so that you can compare yours. There will be tutorial videos released for part one this morning as well, right after the podcast. The part one crochet video is one piece. It's just part one and it'll be released at 10 a.m. Then at 11 a.m. part 1a will be released for the knit shawl part one and then video part 1b will be released a few minutes later. I broke out part one of the knitting video into two pieces because the first part is for how you set up the rows to have a selvage edge on both sides of the rows. And it's something I've done in other shawl patterns before, and it's something that you may have seen in other shawl patterns anyway. It is a phenomenal way to start a tab so that you start the tab for the selvage edge, and then you work along the row, along the end of rows, and along the cast on edge to create this U shape to start the top down, and it makes an invisible join of that selvage edge that ends up being the top width, you know, that top line of the whole shawl. It's a really cool technique, and it's a standalone technique that you can use for any shawl that you design yourself, or you can use it on any shawl pattern. It's really a great standalone technique. So I wanted to separate it from the actual rows that I show you how to do in part one. So it's just a part one and part B of part 1A and 1B for part one of the shawl. I hope that makes sense. It's not meant to sound more confusing than it is. If anybody has any questions, let me know before we move on to my the rest of my exciting updates. I think both shawls are really pretty, but I guess you'll be the one to decide that when you see all of it but you know how much I like to make shawls, so, and you know my aesthetic, so hopefully you can assume that it will be like my normal style of shawl. It's not gonna be anything out of left field. <laughs> but I'm gonna wait a second here before moving on to see if there's any more questions. I wish my glasses didn't glare in the light so bad. Hopefully that's not annoying. Thank you, Steve. Yes, everybody deserves alone time, Kim, even if you do live with other people, I agree. All right, I don't see any other questions. If you decide later on today that you have questions about the mystery knitter along or crochet along or don't know where the links are or whatever, uh, just pop them in the comments in the podcast when it's recorded and I'll help you as best as I can. Um, no, the screen behind me is not new. It just hasn't been back here in a long time. I think I've reorganized my studio since the last time we've done a live in here. This actually, 
This is really a keepsake for me. Uh, I bought the screen several years ago on Amazon, and you can find this style of screen. It's just that rice paper screen with little bits of wooden pieces in between the rice screen, but a rice paper. But what I thought was so special about it is that it made different squares and frames for me to showcase my yarns and my fabrics. So I cut out pieces from my Day of the Dragonfly fabric collection, which you can find on Spoonflower in order now, um, and different yarns. So I've got some dazzling in there, some be so sporty, be so fine. I don't think I have any of the bling yarns yet. I don't think I actually had bling yarn yet. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see all of it from where it is. You can see I've got all of the fabrics and lots of the yarns featured in there. So it's kind of like a scrapbook in a way for me now. Um, and I used to keep it in my bedroom for a long time. I used to hide my TV at night or when I wasn't using it. Um, and turns out I like watching TV in bed at night, so <laughs> I took it out of there. I didn't like moving it all the time. Uh, let's see. Hi, Tammy from Kansas. Ah, Nancy remembers the video. Yeah, I made a video when I made that, too. That was so fun to make. And like I said, it is such a special keepsake for me now. Um, uh, Judy's posting a link to my Spoonflower shop. If you don't know what Spoonflower is, it's a website where artists can upload their artwork onto fabric and you can choose any kind of fabric and have my artwork put on it. And this was my first quilting fabric collection called Day of the Dragonfly. I can't remember if I have, I think I have other fabrics up there now too, but I'm definitely working on new fabric collections, been doing a lot of drawing and uh, should have new stuff up there soon. But in the meantime, these are great fabrics. Um, those of you who have mentioned Redbubble, Redbubble is another website where artists can upload their artwork, but they put it on actual finished items like leggings and t-shirts and tote bags and those chiffon scarves that we love. So they both make fabric, but they do different things with it. So Spoonflower, is the website where you can order my artwork on fabric to do your own sewing. Um, Marie, if you want to email Judy after the show, she can walk you through that maybe. Um, I don't know. I definitely can't help you with that during the podcast, but I know that maybe Judy or I could help you after the show. I don't know why you can't change your email address on my website, but I can't help you with that during the show because I've but I'm sure that Judy would be happy to help you walk you through it. Uh, let's see. So Spoonflower, the screen. Oh, I know. We were talking about Amazon uh, a little bit. And so I wanted to tell you that I have found some new awesome products there. So we talked about Spanx a little bit last week because I know a lot of people have been asking me what kind of shapewear I like. And I've been a huge fan of Spanx for many, many years. In fact, I got to meet the owner of Spanx at Martha Stewart headquarters several years ago. So that was very exciting too. Um, but before that, I've been a huge fan of Spanx for many years. I first learned about it when I was doing lingerie trade shows for Rapture, gosh, seven, seven, six years, six, seven years ago. And I've been wearing mine ever since. Because I hand wash my Spanx, they last a long time. So even though if you look at the initial price tag, you might think, oh, wow, they're expensive. You get what you pay for. They are more expensive than some of the cheaper versions, but I do believe it's a superior product. And if you keep, take care of them properly, no washing machine, no harsh detergents, no uh, hot dryer, they'll last you a very long time. My original pair of Spanx, might be eight or nine years old and I still wear them. I still do. Um, I, If you want to start with one pair, I would start with nude and you can always add on more. I have popped a link to the longer Spanx and the higher waist ones that I wear under dresses in my Amazon shop. But last week I decided to try a pair of high-waisted panties because sometimes I don't think it's very practical to wear that whole long piece if you're um, not doing something special. So I tried the panties and without going too graphic on you this morning, Judy's posted a link to them right there. 
Um, I bought size large and I absolutely love them. And again, I'm not trying to get graphic here, but I want, I want to show them to you under my dress. I'm not going to take the dress off, but I'm wearing the panty version. So the high-waisted one would normally come right to my bra line. I'm wearing the panty version that comes to here and it goes all the way down to there. So it's covering the roll part of my belly and sucking it in. So I normally have a roll right here and a pretty decent sized belly. So it's sucking all of that in and then it goes to thong in the back, which doesn't smash your booty. So I think it's a really nice alternative to um, panties that don't give you any uh, control and not as much coverage as the very high-waisted and you know, shorts version of Spanx. I think this is a really nice in-between piece. Um, so if you want to check those out as well, I've added those to my Amazon shop. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I get asked about it all the time. So if this isn't information for you, I'm sorry, but it is information for others. So we will quickly move on. <laughs> and the next thing I want to talk about is that my sister has been a nail technician for many, many years. And she has been telling me about this nail polish called Vinylux on Amazon for a long time. She said at the last salon she worked at, they even used it for gel manicures because it is a gel polish that doesn't need a UV light. So, Joe, you might like the panties better if that's how you feel. So um, I decided to try it and I've got to tell you, this nail polish is amazing. The brush is different than regular nail polish brushes. So I was able to put it on evenly with very little brush strokes and without very much mess. And they even say on the page that Judy just posted a link to the nail polish. They say that it's a specially designed brush to make it easier for putting the polish on. They also claim that it lasts a week, which this is day three, so I will let you know, I am incredibly tough on my hands. If it lasts five days, I'll be impressed. But at the moment, this is uh, this is gonna be my third day, so it's two solid days so far, and it looks amazing. The color, this particular color is called Cake Pop, which is a color that I traditionally use for uh, doing YouTube videos anyway. Um, it's a very pale pink, but it's opaque, which I really like. I don't like seeing uh, my nails underneath and again it's so it, it goes on there's no base coat the polish itself adheres to your nail and then there is a top coat it dries quickly it's supposed to last a week and it's super easy to put on so if anybody is missing their nail salon doesn't feel like going back to their nail salon right now or likes to do um, manicures at home and just wants something a little longer lasting, I highly recommend this polish and I will keep you updated throughout the week to let you know how long it lasts. But I, I'm, it, it looks like I went to the salon in my opinion. I think it looks really amazing. I did a different color on my toes. Uh, this color is called Tropics. I don't know if you can see. I bought two colors and that one is a bright coral. Um, and so I bought polish and then the top coat. There is no base coat. So that information is on my Amazon shop for anybody that's interested. Uh, I also have two weeks of progress to share with you now about taking melatonin. I found a dosage of melatonin that is working for me. I've tried it over the years and had no no good results. I found a dissolvable tablet that goes under your tongue that's 2.5 millimeters, and I am literally asleep within 30 minutes of taking it and stay asleep throughout the night. So that's in my Amazon shop too, if anybody is interested. Joe, normal polish remover will take this off. Yes, it's fairly easy to remove and change the color. That's what the website says, that's what my sister said, and I haven't done it personally yet, but yes. And the next time I do my nails, I will also probably do it live or in a video so I can show you how easy it is to use this brush. It comes in like 45 colors, 44 colors, something like that. A really large um, variety. But I know uh, I was excited to tell you about the melatonin, but not until I had tried it for a couple of weeks. And I am so happy with my results that I wanted to share that with you. So maybe it has to do with dosage. Now, who would like to see me uh, block these pieces? So I knit and soaked the front and back of my new dress. 
And what I'm going to use today are a few things you can find on my Amazon shop. I'm using some mats that I will lay the work on and also pin into. And I'm also using T-pins and blocking wires. Because these pieces have straight lines, I think it is much more efficient to um, thread a blocking wire through the edges to block it out. I think it's more efficient than blocking with a gazillion pins. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lift the camera up, turn it down. I will not be able to see your comments very well during the tutorial, but if you happen to have questions that don't get answered, always feel welcome to ask them again later unless someone is able to answer the questions for me while we are doing it. So I'm going to I'm going to take a few more things off my desk here. Just scoop things as far over as possible. Oh, and I'm sure there have been questions about what I'm wearing today. I am wearing um, one of my favorite Amazon dresses, and I'm wearing my brand new Sweet Clara vest in Be So Sporty Yarn in Colorway uh, Caribbean Turquoise. The dress is navy. I wore this vest last week over a turquoise dress and I just thought it'd be fun to show you all the different ways you can wear it and today I'm wearing it over a higher contrast color and different look but just as pretty. Why do I have to book? I don't know what you mean. Maybe you want to know why I have to block. Um, I it, When you block something you're getting all of what people would say, oh, when people say, oh, that yarn stretched so much. It's not that the yarn stretches, it's that you didn't find out how your yarn was going to react, how your stitches were going to react butter. It stretches out to its max size, and it is only when you see what how it reacts to water that you can actually determine what the size is of something. And once you do that, it's not going to stretch beyond that. It is just... <clears throat> So it, it definitely is a myth about knitting and crochet. All right, let's, so the more accurate way of describing it is how something reacts to water. All right, I'm gonna try to lift this up some more. So bear with me a second here. And then bring it down, this will work. How's that? I've got my computer side by side, so I think we'll get a bit of some extra help here. Okay, this might be bigger than the amount of boards that I'm doing. I might have to do this on the floor after all. Dang, it's not going to be quite as cute on <laughs> camera. All right, well, let's get started anyway. I can give you the gist of what we're doing. I may have to finish it off camera. So is the neckband even here? We'll start with the neck. So what you're gonna do on all four sides, actually, this is the neck. It's the pattern starts narrow and then grows longer for an A-line dress. So, but what I'm gonna show you on neck here is actually what you're going to do for all four sides of both pieces. And that is just insert your blocking wire in and out of the edge. And you wanna work in between the stitches. Don't, try not to split the yarn not necessary. There's big enough holes in knitting that you can weave in and out without doing that. You know, if you take a little extra time to do it right, it's definitely worth it. I know I'm the type of person that likes to rush through things, but there are some things that I know are, I have better results if I don't rush on, so just being honest. I know I'm more hare than tortoise. <laughs> But it's when we recognize parts of ourselves that we know when to uh, when to make exceptions, right? And this is whoops. Okay, so I'm guiding this with my left hand, and I'm pushing the wire with my right hand. Okay, so now you can see that once the wire is in there, 
if I didn't have the wire in there, I would probably be adding, I don't know, 10 pins to this edge. And now instead, I go with the midpoint and each edge. I could, if I ended up having a lot of pressure on this because of when I do the lower edge, I could always add a second pin in between there. But I have a feeling that that edge is going to be fine. Okay, how am I gonna do this? I actually need more width to do the lower edge because it's wider than my pins at this point. My tripod needs to come up a little bit. Oops. There, how's that? Not bad. Okay, what I can do is add the wire to it, but I will have to get down on the floor and make the, um, and add more mats for the width. The dress is wider than, the dress is wider at the edge than it is, than the mats are right now. But that's okay, because I'm still showing you how to do this, and it's possible we're gonna need a second wire. The, it, the dress might be wider than the wires, which gives you another actual um, tutorial here this morning too. So when the dress or shawl or whatever you're blocking is wider than the wires, you'll need two wires. In fact, we can even fake it if it's not the case. Ah, my wires fell over. Ugh. Okay, am I on camera now? Not yet? <laughs> I'm almost there. There we go, almost on camera. So I'm just going in and out of that lower edge, trying to work between stitches, not breaking the yarn, not necessary. And the wires aren't very sharp either, which actually helps to eliminate stabbing the yarn. It would be easier to do that if it was sharp, kind of like the difference between a sewing needle and a tapestry needle. Tapestry needles, it's a lot easier to work in between stitches. With a sharp needle, it's much easier to make the mistake of splitting your yarn. Okay. All right, these wires are 36 inches and I have a feeling that this is going to be plenty. But what I wanted to show you, let's see where we are on camera. I want to pretend like it's not. So let's slide this down that way. Where are we on camera? I might need to pull this out a little bit to make sure we're in the right spot on camera. Let's say we ran out of wire at that point. I wanted to show you how you do this if you needed to add a second wire for any length. I don't for this particular piece, but if you're doing a 72 inch shawl or whatever, something with a longer length, what you would wanna do is overlap your wires. You want this wire to start before the other one stops. So somewhere along the same spot, I would start my next one. And that way you get a continuous edge still. All right, let's... I know this is a little time consuming and you might be getting bored, but Bear with me a second because there's more to show once you get through this part. Okay, so let's say that this went, let's say that this was long enough to go in that direction, okay? So then what you would be doing is pinning this edge out and you would start by pinning where they overlap and see how when you pin where they overlap, you get a smooth, continuous edge still. Isn't that great? No weirdness where you overlap them because you're pinning them together. And I'll lift the camera up in a second so that you can uh, ask me questions. Okay, so we would then at this point uh, be doing this to this side as well.
you would be doing the sides as well. Okay. Hopefully we'll still get to see some of this on the table when I bring the camera back down. I, oh! Don't get caught. <laughs> see, where is it? There it is. Okay. All right, so we're going to do, I will off camera today now, I will do that, this whole process for the second shawl, or the second uh, dress piece as well. And in a second here, I'm going to make some room so that I can lift this up and you can get a better idea of what it looks like. So I did the top, that's the top edge of the dress, this is the bottom edge of the dress. I will continue off camera to take a blocking wire and block both sides of the dress as well. And then I'll repeat this whole process for the second half of the dress. So they're identical. One's the front, one's the back, whatever. Um, but I will repeat this process for both. Okay. All right, I hope that tutorial was helpful. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, then I'll join the pieces. It's way easier to join pieces together once you have blocked them, because then your sewing is in the right uh, is in the right tension and gauge as well. And we can do that after these dry. That's not a problem. I'm more than happy to show the whole, show the whole process. Thank you, Deborah. This is the Sweet Clara crochet vest. It is a uh, download pattern on my website and there are video tutorials to help along. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Kim. I am so glad that you found this helpful. Blocking wires are a really, really wonderful tool for the blocking process. Not everything has a scalloped edge and when things have straight edges, it is way more efficient and way quicker to weave in a wire first and then use less pins. Way, way, way easier. But not that there aren't good reasons to um, block by hand with pins. When something has a scalloped edge, I prefer to do it by hand. So, and smaller projects I prefer to do by hand. Is this best one piece? Yes, it is. It's a top-down raglan-shaped cardigan that um, you end the sleeves at the end of the raglan. There are instructions in the pattern if you would like to continue on and add long sleeves and there are other photos in the pattern also that show you the long sleeve version. That is correct. And you could certainly add more yarn and make it longer. It's about hip length and the pattern also comes in lots of sizes. Uh, Amritha, I really can't help you with tracking information while I'm live in the podcast. If you would like to email about an order, I would be more than happy to help. Or you can email Judy after the show. Either one of us are happy to help you, but I, I don't have access to information like that when I'm live doing a podcast. Sorry. Thanks, Trina. How do you pronounce Shushugi Ban? It's Shu Sugi Ban. So kind of the way it looks, shu, sugi, bun. It took me many times to figure that out or to uh, practice it first. Shu, sugi, bun is a Japanese technique of burning wood as a way to treat wood. And I think it is so beautiful. I first learned about it on, oh my gosh, what's that um, HGTV show with uh, the couple from Waco, Texas? I can't think of the name of the show, but anyway, they were remodeling somebody's houseboat on one episode one time, and they showed the technique of burning wood in the Shishugiban technique from Japan to not only treat the wood, but also it was so beautiful. And then when I, I was so impressed with it that I Googled it to look up other versions of it and to see how old, Fixer Upper, thank you, Joe, it's from the Fixer Upper show. So you could Google the episode where they fix up their friend's houseboat, and I don't know what episode it is. Yes, Chip and Joanna Gaines, that's correct. Chip had a heck of a time learning how to say Shishugi Ban too, and so I practiced it over and over and over again until I got it right. 
I like how I do when I learn new songs on my piano. Just keep practicing that phrase until I get it. Um, I'm working on a new song for a Name That Song video series right now. I'm super excited to share with everybody. It's a song that I happen to absolutely love. Um, and I'm really struggling on one phrase. Anyway, um, so when I Googled Shishugi Bond Technique, I found that not only does it give this beautiful black finish, to all of these different types of wood, but you could still see the wood grain in it. And sometimes I saw samples where there was like little tints of color thrown in there as well. So when I first dyed colorway Shishugi Ban, I added tints of pale mauve and tints of silver along with the soft black. And that's how I came up with the colorway. You're welcome, Joyce. I love telling backstories to things, it's so fun. I think I saw when I when the camera was done, I think I saw people asking about when the crochet hook tool set was going to come back in stock. It's been sold out for a little while now, and I do have a vague update for it. I don't have an exact update, but I do have a vague update. If you are looking to purchase the crochet hook and tool set, it will be coming back in stock. I do not have a date as of yet, but what you can do is sign up for the wait list on my website for that item. So if you go to the crochet hook and tool set, shopping page on my website and where it says it's sold out there will also be a place to enter an email address to be up to get on the wait list so that as soon as it does become back in stock you will immediately be emailed about new inventory so um and i will say the new set is going to be a little bit different and really awesome so even if you already have the tool set now you may want the new tool set too. And that's the only hint I'm giving. <laughs> so it's not like, it's not like some size hooks you wouldn't still want, uh, even if you only had one of them. So trust me that there are gonna be some really wonderful things um, uh, in it. So if you're interested, if you already have the first one and you love it, you may still want the second one too. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, is Rapture the same thing as Eucalan? Eucalan is the mother company that makes Rapture, if that's what you're asking. Eucalan has other scents as well. Rapture is the scent that I designed for them. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question about Eucalan? Thank you, Rita. I try to be. Joyce, you entered your email for the wait list for the crochet hook tool set? Good, great. Yes, it is coming back in stock. I do not have a date for it right now. All I can say is that if you're interested, sign up for the wait list on the shopping page for it. I don't know, I'm sure Judy, I don't know if anybody posted a link to it. Um, maybe Judy did. I, I don't know, but it's, it's on my website. If you can't find it, ask me and I can send you a link. Um, but if you want it and you uh, just sign up for the wait list, it's so easy. Project bags will be coming back too. Um, so you can sign up for the wait list on those as well. Project bags and tote bags will be coming back different than they were. There'll be new designs, but they are coming back. So thank you, Judy. Judy posted a link to the toolkit just now in the live chat. So if you want to go to that page and sign up for the wait list, that's the best way to find out when it comes back in stock. And if it sells out quickly, you'd be the first to get notification before I even mention it. So I always up, I always email waitlist people before I mention that a product is back in stock. So it is the best way to be first in line or first group in line to know when something's back in stock. So waitlist is an awesome feature on my website. So you can do that for the crochet hook and toolkit. You can also do that for the tote bags and the um, drawstring project bags. Uh, the metallic tote bags someone just mentioned, those are still in stock. So if you want the metallic ones, I still have those. But the canvas tote bags and the drawstring bags, those are sold out right now, but will be coming back in different designs. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for the wait list for that as well. Same with yarn colors. If there's a yarn that you want in a specific color and it's listed there but says sold out, there's always a wait list button there so that you can um, get on the wait list for any color that you want to see back in stock. Hi, Dory. Thanks for joining live. 
At the moment, I don't have any information on Be So Brave coming back. Not to say that it couldn't, but I don't have any information on it right now. Yeah, price is definitely great, Nora. The metallic taupe bags are huge and they're only $1.99. I think I have one in here. Sometimes it helps to see it in video rather than photo. Let me grab one since I know they're in here. I think they'd make a good gift bag too. If you're wanting to give someone a gift, the metallic tote bags are super cute. The logo is small on it. It's a metallic tote bag that is a woven fabric. It has a flat bottom. So they do stand up nicely as well. And it has a snap on it too. It'd be a great carry-on if you were traveling as well because it would hold so much, still go under the seat. Um, and they're $1.99. Yeah, project bags are coming back as well. I'm in, uh, I'm designing new, um, I'm working on new designs right now, but uh, you know, just all part of the process. You know how I work. I work on things when, you know, I strike when the iron's hot on any given project and put other things on different levels of back burner, but I always have like, a hundred things going at once and I just kind of go where the inspiration is and I'm still in the design process. But as soon as I um, solidify the designs, then it doesn't take long at all to get the bags made. So, um, but it's definitely something that I really want to have back in stock. I'm just still working on the designs. I've got, so I, I'm, I'm definitely closer. I'm definitely closer than I was, say, a month ago. <laughs> I know it's vague. I, I don't like vague booking. I don't like vague talk at all, but as long as you're asking questions, it's the best I can do. I can just say that it's in process, which is way more exciting than saying it's not in process, right? Uh, no, it's definitely not all the way on the back burner. It's just in process, and I'm trying to not put too much pressure on myself. I don't want to force anything. I want things to be inspired organically so um just always i always try to really take the pressure off and just work on what is the most exciting at the moment so yesterday it was making this whole piece <laughs> we're run a little late today too goodness so um we ran a little late today we're at 42 minutes which means we are that much closer to the live premiere of the first video this morning there's going to be three videos that come out this morning and i live premiered all of them so i will join you live in fact i need to apologize the last time i live the very last video part five of the mystery crochet along bag the cosmo bag i forgot to join the live <laughs> I know I'd said, well, see you in a few minutes. So I apologize to anybody that looked for me during that live. I got completely distracted when the podcast was over that day and literally didn't remember it until it was over by 15 minutes. And I went, oh my gosh, how did that happen? I, I don't even know how it happened. And I felt so embarrassed afterwards. And I meant to apologize the next morning on the podcast, but something else exciting happened. So... <laughs> Well, gee, there are a lot of projects going at one time, absolutely. A lot of decisions going on, a lot of research and development and design. There's always lots going on, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm very happy with what I do. Uh, yeah, so I apologize. I was not there at the live premiere of the last one. I will be there today for all three live premieres. We're starting with the crochet along part one video, and then after that will be the knit along video part 1A and then the knit along video part 1B. So I think they're premiering at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 11.15. So if you can join one, if you can join all, great. I will be there live if you have live questions for me, but if you can't join them live, it's no problem at all. They, after the live, they get converted into an actual video on my YouTube channel, and you can watch them as many times as you want pause, rewind, rewatch, and anytime you want to ask me a question, post it in the comments and I get notified of those questions too. So however you are most comfortable watching it, they're there. And uh, they I have playlists for each one as well. So when you go to the playlist, every time the new video is released, they'll all be organized in that playlist. And the end of the screen of each video, I have a link to the playlist. So every time you finish a video in a playlist, 
at the end of that screen, it'll show you a link to either subscribe, go to the download pattern, or go to the rest of the videos in that playlist. Thanks, Catherine. It was a little embarrassing sharing Spanx info, but I know it's something that is important to a lot of people. And I remember the first time someone told me about Spanx. In fact, I'll tell you, I was in the, what, the long, one of the lingerie trade shows and this lady came up to me. She was a little abrupt, but and I was skinny at the time and wearing a fitted dress, but I was in one of my skinnier times. And she said, you really should wear shapewear under your dress. And I was like, excuse me, I'm not that I'm not heavy I look great and she um and so she was abrupt and it kind of offended me at first like you know was bristly and she said no it's not about your size it's about smoothing out the lines underneath so smoothing out your panty lines she says if you're wearing panties you've got panty lines and everybody has bumps and curves and she says it is not about whatever size you are it's not about changing your size which you can actually lose a size visually with wearing shapewear. It's about smoothing things out and just looking completely put together from 360 degrees. And when she said that, and I try to pair on, I gotta tell you, I never went back. I have never gone somewhere professional trying to look put together in 360 degrees without a pair of Spanx ever since. So even though her delivery was a little bristly, I will never forget what she shared with me and I will appreciate it for the rest of my life. So that's a good way to end. <laughs> so I think we'll stop there. I know we went long today. I appreciate uh, anyone's patience who stayed. If anybody who couldn't stay, I totally understand. But tutorial was important and there was a lot to share today. So thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed all the updates, the tutorials on blocking and blocking wires and all the other stuff that we talked about. If you have any questions, always feel welcome to ask me. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, we'd love to have you here more often. You just click that red bell, red button in the corner. And if you want to be notified every time I go live, you could click the bell button there as well. If you have friends that might enjoy my podcast or my videos, please always feel welcome to share anything with other people. I appreciate it very much. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And if you can join me, we're going to do three live premieres after the podcast today. Thanks. Otherwise, I'll see you same time, same place podcast tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.